we bring to you the inspired word of God as you listen to the teachings and preachings of a servant of God, Hosanna David, preaching the end time gospel. We will take this up again before we say the opening prayer. <laughs> of all these words that they have survived for greatness. Let the wind of the Holy Ghost blow into this house now. As many minds that have been imprisoned by the devil, Lord, let there be earthquake in those hearts in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. If you are singing the song of I am finished, I am finished, Today, that song will become, it is finished, it is finished, mm. in the name of Jesus. Amen. Father, bless our spirits, bless our souls, bless our bodies, and everything around us. The name of God the Father. Amen. And of the Son. Amen. And of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. meaning for me. It takes me to the other world beyond. Don't wake me up. Praise the Lord. We have the business of the day. May the Lord help us to run with the speed of light in Jesus' name. Amen. Mephibosheth. We want to pick a few verses from 2 Samuel chapter 9. Beginning from verse 1. And David said, Is there yet any that is left of the house of Saul, that I may show him kindness for Jonathan's sake. And there was of the house of Saul a servant whose name was Ziba. And when they had called Ziba, and he said, Thy servant is he. And the king said, Is there not yet any? of the house of Saul, that I may show the kindness of God unto him. And Ziba said unto the king, Jonathan had yet a son, which is lame on his feet. Praise the Lord. In 2 Samuel chapter 4 verse 4, the Bible says, news came from the battlefield, and he knew it was a very sad one, that Saul, the king of Israel, the aspired king of Israel, had died. And the beloved friend of David himself also perished in the war. So the nurse of Mephibosheth carried him when he was just five years old and was running to save the life of this young boy because they were afraid that David would wake, wake up and destroy everybody from the house of Saul so that he could secure the kingdom for himself. As the nurse was running, she fell. The child fell and the child's two legs became condemned. A child who had tasted Walk, walked on his two feet, 
became lame from that early age of five. He couldn't move again. Though he came from a kingly family, from a royal family, hospitals to take him to and take good care of him, they had to flee for their lives. I don't know how they managed to treat those wounds, but this boy survived. He survived the fall. He became lame. If the kingdom would have been transferred to the grandchild, since many of the children of Saul were already destroyed, if the kingdom had been, would have been transferred, maybe it would have been so lucky to become the king. But God had already chosen another person, David, to become the king of Israel. But that never meant that the boy never had the mark of royalty in himself. He was still a prince in the kingdom. The blood of royalty was still running in the veins of this boy. And this boy grew up and became a man. He grew up with that condition. And he started living his life. Thank God, God blessed him. And he had slaves, had children. But a day came, after David had received the kingdom, David had to think about the love Jonathan had for him. How Jonathan protected his life. To the extent that David had to confess that Jonathan, your love for me is more than the love of women. He said, today, I want to reward that my late friend. So he asked, is there still anybody remaining in the house of Saul? I want to show that person the kindness of God. This was a child that was brought up in the palace. He had to leave the palace and was raised outside the palace. Nobody knew his name. He became a cripple. Even as at that time, he was a man, but couldn't walk. The servant of Saul rebelled against him. Let's look at our Bible. Then, Look at verse 8. And he, let's read 7. And David said unto him, Fear not, for I will surely show thee kindness for Jonathan, thy father's sake, and will restore thee all the land of Saul thy father. And thou shalt eat bread at my table continue. Continue, continually. And he bowed himself and said, What is thy servant that thou shouldst look, look upon such a dead dog as I am? Look at the adjective he used in qualifying himself. A prince said, Who am I? Ordinary dead dog that should eat upon the table of the king. Here, I once said, it is manageable for somebody to be poor and remain poor. But it is unbearable for somebody to be rich and become poor and remain poor. Oh, we fear. And in the race of life, climbing is easier. Climbing to the top is easier than remaining at the top. The struggle to remain at the top is much more harder, bigger than the stress of climbing up. 
Because if you get up there and you fall down, they laugh, no be here. When rich man begin to use big belly, they track for roads. And the belly self, no one come down. You no one reason the poverty. Trouble deal. This young man who was raised in the palace, she stayed bitterness outside the palace. But a time came, he was restored back to his position. May the Lord restore someone here in the name of Jesus. There is something they call mercy killing. Mercy killing. Think the English word is euthanasia. When, because of the troubles, because of the pains of a patient, the doctor we advise that since this trouble is too much, why not we inject this patient so that this person can even die quietly now? The pain is too much. Just die and have rest. Mercy killing. If Mephibosheth had been someone's son today, there are people who will strangulate that child. That what am I doing with a cripple? With cripple on both legs. Let's kill this one. Let this one die. But God Almighty knew why he saved the life of this one. Sunday here, somebody in Marina, Lagos, you know the news? Eh? Medical doctor who had a driver, a good car, Jeep. God drove and got to the bridge and said he had frustration. Packed the car and jumped into the lagoon and died. Medical doctor. And just died like that. God does not just save people. When God saves you, he has a plan for your life. Even when a man called Jonah was saying, Jonah said, Listen, I'm the cause of this trouble. Carry me, fling me where, where, and throw me into the sea. The trouble will be over. God himself said, there is a message I have sent you. There is a mandate you must fulfill. As before this man could land, a very big fish, they said this well, but we don't know, came and swallowed him, took him to his destination, and vomited him there. Praise the Lord. Do you also know that if somebody sleeps with the wife of the chief of army staff, that case in Nigeria may not get to the courts? Eh? You don't understand. Who am I to beat for you one day? I am to beat you. Raise up your hand. I am to beat you one day. God bless you. Kai, for the chief of army staff to come home and then he will get report that Joseph was trying to sleep with me. This is his coat. I managed to struggle and escape the rape. Only Kai will lie. In fact, Joseph will just faint and die. But because God himself had a plan for this young man, God placed in his heart, don't beat him. Don't touch him. There is a plan. This man is on a journey. I have saved him before from the wickedness of his brothers. You don't know how he vanished and became a member of your household. Even though he is a slave, he is on a journey. Please, Potiphar, can you push him to where I want him to be? That was how. Joseph, from his father's house, transported into a pit. From the pit, he was sold to slave buyers. From there, he was sold to Potiphar. 
from Potiphar, he entered the prison of the king, Pharaoh. God moves in a mysterious ways. He wonders to perform. I saw a guy. He was saying, if my mother dead, throw my things out. All I need to do is buy chewing gum, chewing gum. I will just buy chewing gum. Before I move from this street to that street, I will see a boy that will call me and put me into his house. That is the mentality of some humans. Joseph never gave up. Mephibosheth never gave up because he knows that all things, both good and bad, in heaven, in hell, in the world, under the earth, they work for the good of those who love God. If you love God, God has a way of making everything around you to work together for your good. And Jesus said, this sickness is not unto death. This one that my friend is having is not unto death. And this man became Lazarus. He became the first person that entered the Guinness Book of Records that after four days, he woke up again. There are times God may be taking us through a very long path, saving us and taking us through a very dry path. And because of our short-sightedness, we'll be complaining and insulting God. I want to pray for somebody. Any relationship that is tying your, your destiny down, may that relationship break. Relationship that is tying your destiny down. I say, may that relationship scatter today. God is not a destiny changer. You say at all, maybe because you did not understand me well. I say, we sing a song, destiny changer, destiny changer. You know the song? I tell you, God is not a destiny changer. I have not seen anybody, any child, they give birth to, and a prophet now say, this child, the destiny is not good. Have you seen anyone like that? What is the prophecy, the usual prophecy? The destiny of this child is very great. Who made it great? God is a destiny maker. God does not change people's destiny. He corrects destinies. He is the maker. He makes our destinies and he sends us into this world. He does not make our destiny and still change it. So every point in time, God will always make sure he saves us so that what he has prepared for us will come to pass. Remember Saul, Paul. He was on the sea traveling with other prisoners and the wind came, storm came when all hopes were gone. The angel of the Lord appeared to him and told him, look, this ship, no life shall be lost. Because if God had a message for this man, listen, there are deaths I don't fear. There are things that I know can never, never kill me in this world. Because I know where I am going to. There are threats that can never, never move me in this world. There are some sets of persons, even if they carry a gun and face me, I will know that this person, this person cannot kill me. If you have a destiny... God will also monitor the destiny to make sure that you fulfill that same destiny. The angel of the Lord appeared to him and told him, Paul, you shall not die. You will appear before the king. 
You will preach my words to them. Even after he came out, a serpent beat him. And he flung the, the serpent into the fire. And the serpent got burnt in the fire. People were watching him to die. The man never fell. He never died. I don't know what you are passing through in this house. If God saved you, it is for a reason. If God has ever delivered you and saved you from death, that God has a purpose for your life. There are some times, God, if God wants to do some things, he will make sure everybody's eyes become closed. Look at the life of Jesus, how he came into this world. Jesus came not through the palace. Just look at how God works in a mysterious way. He came through a commoner, an ordinary virgin, through a, a, a capital son who was the foster father of Jesus Christ. And even the day they gave birth to this man, Jesus, he was not giving birth to at home so that compound people will not know. He came quietly, quietly, and he came in the night when all the enemies were sleeping. He, he was not even born in the hospital. He was born where? In a manger. If you grow up, and your mother tells you all these stories, that this is how you, you have suffered, though. you were born in a manger, where animals eat. Some children will pick off us, especially some of these American children. But that is how Jesus came. Even when he was growing up, Jesus had to be taken to Africa he grew up in Africa and ate apple. He ate gari in Africa here. The Savior had to come to Africa. The enemies of the Israelites brought Jesus up until he became a man. There are some things that can happen to you so that people will remove their eyes from you. There are some troubles you can meet in life so that when people see you, they will say, this one, I better get out, it's going nowhere. But the Bible says, even the temptation will make a way for you. <laughs> With the temptation, God will provide a way of escape. <laughs> How many of us are asking God why? God, why me? Why me? Me, I will not ask God why me. Now me. My destiny is not like your own. The Bible God used in writing my destiny is not the one you use in writing your own. I cannot copy what is happening in your life and paste it into my life. No. Some people fail in life because they don't know what God has for them. Listen, before we pray. The troubles of this life, they will not make you less human. They confirm your humanity. Troubles don't come into this world because of trees. They don't come into this world because of animals. Troubles, they come into this world because of human beings. And if they come to you, don't just give up anyhow. Blind men, they play piano. I mean... Somebody that is blind plays piano, piano. There is a pastor, Nick Vujicic. He has no hands, no legs. Just a little flipper like this. He's a motivational speaker. He has two children now. So people, only one eye that is bad. Only one eye. You are ashamed for your life? No, a brother, he has ear problem. He has money to buy uh, this uh, earpiece so that he could hear well. But he told me he's ashamed to use it. Honorary ear problem. He 
It's a shame to use it. How many madmen have you seen having fever? Fever. How many has HIV? Because their own is finished. Madmen, they drink water from the gutter. They don't bow down. They enter people's dustbin. The food you say is sour, is bad. Throw it in the dustbin. A mad woman, madman will go there, eat it very well, lick finger. You will even be jealous of that madman. That's it, the way he's enjoying this food. I wish I'm partaking in this meal. But they will eat all those ones and come out strong. They will still be strong. Why? Devil, the devil himself, don't pursue mad men. They are already in his cage. If you have a destiny, if you have been saved and troubles come your way, if you decide to handle the trouble the way you want, you will definitely fail. That is why the Bible says in Matthew eleven twenty eight. Come out on me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will do what? I will give you rest. Do not tell me you are stealing because there is no job in Nigeria. In this country, the toothpick you use, many of them are from China. Don't tell me there is no job. It's on a wood, they carve. Wood, we import it from China. Plastic blades, we import it from China. Don't tell me there is no job. There is job in Nigeria. If there is no job, why are white men coming here? Eh? This our fine house. Congolese came and worked on this house. Congo, people from Congo, they came and plastered this vicarage. But we have youths here. There is no job. Oh, there is no job. You are drawing the waste and chewing chigong, drinking alcohol. No job. Congolese are coming here to do the job. You, a sister, said something here that whether she was roasting bole, and somebody said, why are you doing this job? He said, I want to go to school, but there is no money. I will train you. If you do not run after boys, you are hawking. A beautiful lady like you, me, I will train you. If they throw you outside and you pack your loads into one boy's house, or you are a boy, one woman now rent apartment for you that you are the sugar boy, you are enjoying somebody's ex-wife, and you do not stay on the street, the time God will send your head back to you on the street, they will look for you. Where is God? Where is that homeless boy, that homeless girl? I can't find that person. Where is the person? Homeless boy. They do idiotic things with one mama when he belay don't fall, rich ground. Because they give us much more money. May the Lord deliver us in the name of Jesus. If you are here, you are a girl, you are a boy. Because somebody is helping you, don't dash yourself out to that person. Because somebody is helping you, because you are in trouble, somebody is helping you, just manage this world. By permit, you say, that is your destiny. God has sent a helper. You still need to pray. And if you are a man, you are a woman. You see somebody because you help now. You say you must collect your own. You must marry the person. You may be making a very big mistake. Jesus fed 5,000 persons and never asked any woman to follow him home. He gave them food free of charge. You, because of Tanta Fatasia, the Chukuto, Mr. Beast, you now use yourself as offering. For one boy, sorry for you. Because I have seen people who boys sent to school. By the time they came back, 
they look at the boy and they discover that their destiny is different from that boy's own. But you must marry that boy, oh, that is my judgment. <laughs> Who open your eyes? Bessie, where carry you go up? You say you don't reach up. He said, may you lift her and carry him up. You say we will not be the same level. Problem, they come on. What I am saying is that don't just attach your destiny to anybody, anyhow, anytime. Because your destiny is different. God has a purpose for your life. I ask this question. Some of the children we have aborted would have been presidents. Presidents of countries. When people get raped, they will say, let's abort it. You don't know why it is happening like that. God can send some people in a mysterious ways into this world. And tell me any rich man that came in a very smooth way into this world. How many? Be on your feet. You will talk to your father that God, if you are the one saving my life, show me the greatness with which you saved my life. That great purpose. I must live to see it. Lift up your two hands before your father. Say, oh Lord, my father. Thank you for saving me. But I pray today that purpose, that reason with which you save me, bring it to pass. Oh Lord, my father, correct my destiny. Make out of my destiny. Correct my destiny. Enlarge my cause. Oh Lord, my Savior. May my life be a symbol of greatness. Say amen. We hope you were blessed by this message. For more information, visit our website www.hosannadavid.com. Email us at info at hosannadavid.com God bless you.